Hey everybody, it's Steve here, and welcome back to Castlevania 3. Um, in this episode, um, I'm going to explain what's going on here in a second. Um, there is the split in the path there. There are multiple paths that you can take um, in this game. Um, this particular, uh, what I'm recording right now, is recorded after the fact. Um, I've already picked a certain path I've been playing. Um, but then I realized that, you know, this is such a great game with so many different you know, options as far as levels go. It'd be a shame not to show all of them. Now, I've said this game's a pain in the ass, and it is, so I don't know why I'm taking on the extra burden, <laughs> burden, but of, of showing um, even more levels. It's, it's hard enough to, just to get through the one, any, any of the ones that you choose to get to the end of the game. That's hard enough, so why am I choosing to tackle even more? It's like playing the game two or three times, basically, at once. Um, so if, you know, my score, my lives aren't matching up right now, because this is going to come after the first episode, um, if they don't match up or anything, that's why, because I went back, I played the game again, I still haven't beaten it, just so you know, <laughs> I'm still not guaranteeing that this is going to be a complete playthrough, um, but I just wanted to show as many of the levels as I possibly could, we don't want that, go away, we got holy water, we want to keep that, um, I have a hard time doing that. You know, whipping these candles, it, it, it's one of those things where what you really should do is is whip the candle from afar and then wait to see what drops. If you, like, jump at it, whip it at the same time, the item's going to pop out and you're going to grab it at the same time. And you could potentially grab something that you don't want, such as a dagger or something, you know? Although I do find some uses for that in this game. Um, I usually end up using it against Medusa on the boat, but... Anyway, we'll talk more about that when the time comes. Um... Uh, I, I think that the idea to show many different paths came from this level. Um, it's such a cool level that I just couldn't imagine not showing it. Um, basically, you're climbing up this giant clock tower. You've got the pendulums that you've got to jump across. You've got these rotating gears. Um, these ones here, even though they are moving, it's kind of weird that um, Trevor does not move with them. You can walk safely on them. It's only the big circular gears with with uh with like the cogs on them are the ones that are going to move um this level is a tricky one um here we have the flying medusa heads uh the bane of every castlevania game um their goal is to simply screw you over it's just that simple um flying from sometimes both sides of the screen oh come on jeez oh, it is their mission to knock you into pits and whatnot. Um, they are probably the biggest pain in the ass enemy in the Castlevania game series uh, as a whole, honestly. Um, well, maybe the birds too, but nothing. I think the Medusa heads are worse. Um, be caref be caref caref careful. Anyway, be careful um, when you're on the gears. See, yeah, there's a dagger. Who wants that? Um, you can fall off of them. Um, you know, this is, again, early on, um, with this kind of, uh, game mechanic. Freaking more Medusa heads. So, it's tricky to, you know, it's not fully flushed out yet, basically, is what I'm saying. Um, one of the most frustrating things about not only this game, but other games at the time, is that sometimes one little pixel of uh, deviation, oh geez, okay, um, can mean disaster even when it normally, well that was close, even when it normally wouldn't, wow these guys take two hits, so there's only one reason why you would play this particular level, it is optional, you can take the bottom path at that intersection, um, the only reason that you would take this particular path is um, for this. Uh, we've got a boss fight, and as soon as we do it, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's the other aspect which makes this game different than uh, its predecessors. Get back down here. No. Come on. Two more hits. Just drop. Okay. There you go. So, here's the thing. is that In this game, you can have uh, Trevor can have a partner. Basically, there's three options. Um, 
there is this character here, who we're going to find out is named Grant. Um, and there's also um, Sypha and uh, Alucard. Depending on which path you take, you'll encounter um, one or the other, or you're, you'll never encounter all three in one playthrough, but you can only have one at a time. Um, we feel kind of bad for Grant. He says that his family was killed by Dracula. He was like transformed into this monster. So we'll take him along. Um, wow, Trevor's left-handed. And apparently everyone that he meets is as well because they shake with their left hands. Um, so you have a partner. You can switch back and forth between Trevor and Grant now. Man, the whole map shakes. That's how, you know, this clock tower is coming down. Um, why is it the places always crumble and fall? Why, <laughs> when, when things are defeated or enemies are defeated, you know, <laughs> why is it that, that the, the boss is what's holding the entire structure up? And as soon as he's defeated, the place begins to crumble. <laughs> I don't know. Um... You can switch back and forth between Trevor and whichever character you have. Here's my thing. I am a... purist. I, I mean, I don't know if that's the right word. I really don't like using the other characters. It just doesn't make it feel like a Castlevania game. Um, it's all about the Belmonts, you know, whether it's Simon, Trevor, whoever. It, it, you're, it, to me, it's one of my little OCD things is that I'm supposed to play with whatever Belmont character of the Belmont family that uh, the game involves. So you're honestly, I can't imagine under any circumstance that you're going to see me using the alternate characters. Um, yeah, I know they can be helpful in certain areas. If I ever really get stuck, I don't know. It, it doesn't make the game any easier, I can tell you that. Here's the other reason why you would only go up to this level if you wanted Grant as your partner. And that's because you not only have to get all the way up to the top of the clock tower, you've got to get all the way back down again, too. In order to get back to, you're eventually going to take the, at that intersection, you're eventually going to take the lower path regardless of what you do. Whether you choose upper or lower, you're going to end up taking the lower path anyway. Um, doing the clock tower shortens that third level a little bit, but, you know, honestly, there's nothing in it that's that dangerous where you would want to skip it. But, yeah, I mean, that's basically it. All the way up to the top of the clock tower, you get Grant as your partner. Eh, whatever, I'm going to get the holy water back eventually, who cares. Um, you know me in secondary weapons, I'm just not, I'm not that big on using them. Uh, except against bosses, obviously. Um, you got to think uh, of things in reverse now. You know, you got to get across these gears going against their rotation now instead of with it. Can be a little tricky. Um, the pendulums here coming up, at least you only have to do one of them. Um, not that it's any different. This is one thing that is the same coming and going, but this one you can just skip. Get down the stairs. Um, and that's about it. Um, so like I said, if you, if you choose this path, the next level will... You start like halfway through it, kind of. Um, if you choose the bottom path, then you're going to have to play the whole level. But it's not that bad. Um, I usually skip this level, but like I said, it was just too cool not to show it off. It's probably one of the coolest looking levels in the game. Um, and as far as using certain mechanics that you don't find anywhere uh, else, those this whole clock tower motif doesn't appear anywhere else in the game. Just what, if I think I mentioned this before, if you're going to get hit by a Medusa head or any of the other, other enemies later on, they're swooping across the screen, or really anyone for that matter. If you gotta take a hit, make sure you're on the stairs, because then Trevor won't get knocked backwards. Oh, really? All right, let's just get out of here. <laughs> I think I want to take. Oh, jeez. Um, I'm not about to die. Oh shit, shit. Just get out of here. Anyway, there we go. Yeah, you won't get knocked back if you're on the stairs. Um, anyway, that's it um, for the clock tower level. Um, we're going to pick up where we left off from last time in the next video. So until then, uh, everyone take it easy. Have a good day. Peace. And I will see you next time for more of uh, Castlevania 3. Bye.